The kind of music that Jefferson, as a young man, would have encountered really depended upon what he was doing and where he was going. And for instance, uh, as he was uh, riding on horseback through the countryside, he may have passed uh, a group of poorer people informally dancing. Uh, and an informal dance could be to a fiddle. In many cases, uh, it was done to the banjo. The uh, slaves and free African Americans um, interacted with the poorer uh, whites in informal dance settings. And this is something we know from other accounts of travelers that they mention, oh, by the way, we saw a dance under the, under the maple tree by the river. Late in America's colonial period, a new age was dawning, the age of enlightenment. The enlightenment affected both Europe and the colonies. Ideals of liberty and individual responsibility expanded and grew as part of the American Revolution. The musical works of the day reflected this change in political and social attitudes. It wasn't just the classical music that, that Jefferson loved. He loved sacred music, the church music, psalms and hymns, um, those he shared with his older sister Jane. And his granddaughter talks about his great love of Scottish music from boyhood. This is, she called Scottish music the national music of Virginia. This is what people sang um, in their homes. There are a couple of important ways in which the musical culture changed through Jefferson's life. When he was young, virtually all of the music was imported and performed and played in this country in a way that you just think of it as being European music that happens to be played in America especially after the revolution because of all the, the strong sense of patriotism that many people felt, we start to see a, a gradual shifting in the themes of the songs and the names of the dances and so forth more and more toward American topics. And not so much yet in musical style, but you may have Yankee Doodle reset as a political song about the Constitution, for instance, during that period.